from John. Andrew, how long will the country continue to be so divided? Uh, you seem like you have lived a lot more life than I have at 22 years old. I don't just seem like I've lived a lot more life. I have lived a lot more life than you have at 22 years old. How has it gotten this? Has it gotten this bad before uh, and come around for the better? How long will PC culture and the Democratic left continue to pass judgment on me for being a Christian conservative? Are we beyond reconciliation? First, uh, let me point out that really what we're experiencing now is the norm. What was abnormal is that after World War II, uh, the victory of World War II, the fact that the, our competing markets were completely destroyed, uh, brought a kind of unity and consensus to America that most countries never achieve. When uh, Barack Obama said, oh, usually we're fighting, moving the ball around the 50-yard line, he was lying because he knew that those days were gone, but they had been here from about the 50s to about 1968. 1968 was when everything fell apart and the 60s happened and blew across uh, – blew away that consensus. <laughs> so what you're dealing with now is kind of the norm. Uh, this kind of division, this kind of anger. You know, we had a civil war in this country. This is nothing. And you're just seeing, as I've said this before, what you're seeing is you're seeing that when it, when things fall apart like this, the gravity goes out of the room and the furniture starts floating around the room and everybody gets very nervous about where it's going to land because they think, oh my gosh, you know, the possibilities for disaster are endless. And that's true. But usually people keep disasters from happening. What I'm seeing now is I'm seeing... Uh, Donald Trump reshaping the Republican Party to be more of a populist party and and with some solid conservative elements. And what makes me laugh about the guys, say, at National Review, who are just uh, feel all, all our principles are going down the drain, the Republican Party was never – a full-flown vehicle for conservatism. Conservatism was always folded into the Republican Party. Uh, presidents like George H.W. Bush and George W. Bush drove conservatives insane because they betrayed a lot of the principles of conservatism, but they were the only party in town. And so now it's going to be drive us insane in different ways, uh, in populist ways that didn't weren't there before, but there will still be a conservative element to the Republican Party. All this will shift out. I really do believe that uh, Donald Trump, just judging from right now, is going to be a force for good in this because he is going to be, when, when a lot of his policies work, they're not going to seem so outlandish. It's not going to seem so strange anymore to cut taxes, to go dial back on regulations, to have constitutional judges. He could really reshape the party for a long time. Now, about your Christian conservatism, if you read your actual Bible, right, Jesus tells you the world is not going to like you. The world is going to give you tribulation. It is going to cause you pain. It is going to reject you as a Christian conservative. That is the norm. And when it's not the norm, uh, sometimes it, it's not so good. Like, in other words, when uh, Christianity becomes acceptable to the mainstream, sometimes the mainstream and Christianity begin to confuse uh, get confused together. So, for instance, a lot of people think that Christianity is living a life that was suitable to the 50s. When I read the gospel, that's not what I read. I do not think the Lord incarnated himself and suffered death on the cross to solidify the 50s. I mean, the 50s were just a time when they happened to have certain values that were uh, featured in the magazines, but people were living all kinds of different lives, and Christians were living all kinds of different lives. So, your Christian conservatism, your Christianity, forget about your conservatism for a minute, your Christianity is supposed to be at odds with the world. You're supposed to be the guy that everybody says, wait a minute, why is that guy so happy when everybody hates him? You know, that's basically what Christianity looks like. So, you know, there will there is going to be a, a new consensus. A new consensus is coming. I see it about five to 10 years down the road. It will shape itself slowly. If Trump continues to be a successful president, that will help things along. I think a new consensus is coming. It will be a, a more conservative consensus, I think, than we've had before. And uh, and I, so I think the, the news is basically good. But you're going to have to go through this time when we are like countries uh, most countries divided. I mean, that's that's what's happening. Uh, what, what I don't want to see is I don't want to see what happened in Europe happen to us, where the ruling class goes off on this tangent of diversity and, uh, and you know, lawless immigration, while the people are sitting there saying, no, you know, and, and this is the insane thing. This is why you can't be silenced when people call you racist. You can't be silenced when people call you sexist. You can't be silenced when people call you names. You shouldn't be racist. It's wrong to be, it's obviously against God to be racist. You don't want to be sexist, but you don't want to be, sh be shut down by people calling you those names. So people are going to, you know, if you're a Christian, people are going to come after you. That's always going to be true. But obviously uh, you have a higher calling.